Well, welcome to Success Unlimited Podcast, where we explore our guest journey, uh, explore their challenges, their successes. And with us today, we have Jeff and Jack and Witt uh, with uh, Family Friendly Sc- Screenwriting Ac- Academy. Writing movies is the kind of career that only people dream of, or they think of Hollywood, they think of uh, all the fame and the glory and, and the money and all the glitz and glamour that comes with it. But uh, today, our guests have built a career out of dispelling mm-hmm. that, met, that, that myth. Uh, originally from Canada, they've joined forces. They have moved to Mexico. Uh, Jacqueline is a professional award-winning uh, screen screenwriter. Jeff is an entrepreneur. And since launching in January of 2023, the Academy offers online classes, festivals, and consultation services for screenwriters. Uh, Jacqueline is currently writing a book and a whole lot more. Uh, Jeff and Jacqueline, uh, welcome to our podcast. How are you all doing today? Thank you. Doing great. Good to be here. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, Why don't I kick things off and tell me a little bit of background and how you came from Canada to, to Mexico. Well, there's lots of parts to that story. Um, Maybe Jacqueline, you can take this one. Sure. Yeah. Um, So my kids were, uh, or our kids were like basically uh, finishing school. And so the youngest one was like about to graduate. And so we realized, okay, well, we're heading into a new phase of our life. And we had this idea for a business, the Screenwriting Academy, Um, but it's so hard. Like we lived in Canada near Vancouver. It's just super expensive. And so for us to have the time and the energy to put into building a business, we just thought if we could go at it 100%, uh, we could do way better. And so we made the decision to, since the kids were done school, right? We made the decision to uh, sell everything, quit our jobs and move to Mexico so we could start our business because it's cheaper to live in Mexico. Uh, and then that way we could be all in. And uh, yeah, so that's that's how that happened. Wow. So cool. what what drew you into screenwriting? Do you guys have a both of you have a, a history in that or because we were talking before we started recording how some folks who write books might find it challenging to write. Uh, screenwriting and vice versa. So, right. Yes. Yeah, so how do you get into screenwriting and how do you just come up with the idea of family friendly screenwriting? Well, I'll start by saying I'm not a screenwriter. <laughs> now, as I have immersed myself in the screenwriting world, um, I'm learning a lot, of course, uh, about the industry and about writing itself as I uh, sit in on Jacqueline's classes and such. But Jacqueline is the writer. And so, uh, again, I'll pass it back to her. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I guess, um, like, I've always been a creative person, and when I was 11, a friend of mine said, hey, you want to write a script with me? So we started writing a script, but, you know, I'm sure we were both ADHD, and so two weeks later, we forgot about it, uh, but I kept the notebook, and so every now and then, I would come across it, and I'd look at the script, and I'd write a bit more, and then throughout my teen years, um, I just, I would write for fun, but it was always scripts. I wasn't necessarily so much into longer form, like, you I think I might have only written one or two short stories. Most of the time it was scripts or poems or songs, or something like that. I like to be able to get it all done uh, in a neat little package that doesn't use a lot of words. <laughs> and so a script, when you look at the script, there's a lot of white on the page. And that's just how my brain works. I like to I like to just write what's necessary and then, and then I don't get into the other details. And uh, so then I wrote my first, a movie script when I was in my early 20s and I realized I loved that because I was writing for stage before that um, but I had an idea that wouldn't work for a stage so I had to learn how to write a movie and then it was about eight years ago that um, Jeff read one of my screenplays and he said this needs to actually get produced because I had just written for fun because I love it for all these years and he said, no, no, you need to actually pursue this. And so then I got a mentor to learn how to write with industry standards, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then a couple of years ago, it's like the doors just started flying open. I, I, I want to kind of maybe take a step back. Uh, it's, 
I, I've never, first of all, I have never really spoke with someone who are, who is writing script for movies. So uh, it's and, and not necessarily a bucket list, but it's that's it's a pretty cool thing today to you know to have time with y'all folks. And um, so, but you write what 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 type of movies are you writing for? Are they are they Clint Eastwood esque? I mean, so maybe talk a little bit about that. <laughs> Sure. Um, okay. So I, when I was writing for fun, like for me, it was always therapeutic. So it was, there was something going on in my life that I needed to process through and art has always helped me to process through, right? So whether it be music or writing. Um, and so especially like my earlier stories, you'll see that it's going to be, uh, it's going to have funny parts, but it's more going to have a dramatic kind of uh, tone to it. And and there's something that's valuable to learn and grow and, you know, like that. But uh, so then over the last few years, as I've gotten more into like writing for the, you know, for industry, um, then I really, really love to write movies that are like faith based um, or faith adjacent, which basically means that it may not revolve around faith or include faith but it still fits with that particular market. That's the market that, I, um, that I'm working with. Okay. Cool, so, that's, that's interesting. So it's especially in the, in the time that we live and uh, I, I know that my family, my wife and I, and Tom is, is our oldest son. We have three sons and, and in all of our families combined, we're all are very strong in our faith and and our, you know, our, our worldview is, is, is probably a little bit different maybe than, than some. It's, it's really more uh, Christian perspective and context. So there, so obviously it seems like there's been a, quite an increase even in faith-based films, sure. movies, right? And major productions have come out uh, in the theater. And, and to me, that was just kind of like a, a wow, really. So, and, and the quality is, is really, really good. It's improving, catching up. Yeah. So like there's a, uh, instead of Netflix, there's a, uh, a, a similar thing, except it's, it's pure flicks. I believe it is. Um, have yeah. you ever, have you, or are you in the future going to be aligning yourself with a brand like that or a streaming service like that to uh, p push out some of your, your work or. Uh, well, there's always an option. I mean, with distribution, that's the part where, like, the distribution is, is where it gets distributed, right? So streaming platforms are definitely part of that. Um, so PureFlix was actually recently bought by GAC, Great American Channel, I think, um, okay. which is a newer one also, Great American Family. Uh, it's the same thing. Um, the guy who used to run Hallmark has kind of moved away from Hallmark, started his own thing. And then he also purchased PureFlix. And so there's a bit of industry stuff for you there. <laughs> but yeah. um, so they do have a faith uh, element um, to it, but they're not the only ones. There are other uh, streaming flat platforms who are also faith based. Um, and so uh, they are definitely um, like on my radar and also, you know, where I would potentially go to for. Um, even sometimes they offer opportunities for funding and stuff like that. Wow. Okay. Uh, but um, to be honest, you can actually like there's faith based um, material on a lot of different platforms, like even Tubi and stuff like that. So you don't have to stick to a uh, just specifically faith based streaming service. There are multiple uh, services and, and they take uh, faith content also. So, Amazon Prime will have uh, a, a, a number of faith-focused uh, movies as well. Just any of those platforms. Well, that's interesting because I mean, there's there's with with technology, it, the the opportunities I think are are very wide uh, for anyone that is involved in the arts um, or in in any kind of business. It's it is a we live in a very uh, technological time, uh, environment. It's uh, especially now with the advent of, of a AI. So interesting. Yeah. So a question for, for Jeff, you, 
you know, Jacqueline's a screenwriter, the, the, the teacher, the professor of, of, uh, of classes, if you would. You're the entrepreneur. Um, He's the producer. No. <laughs> <laughs> so how does how does the entrepreneurship fit with the screenwriting uh, business and, and her talents? And what what's your background in entrepreneurship and what gave you the idea, I guess, to, to launch this as a business? That's a good question. Um, ultimately, uh, in this context, uh, I'm being a support for my wife. Now, that, that's the way it started. Um, in other words, in other words, um, her career definitely was had a trajectory that was was heading towards, uh, you know, success as a screenwriter. And um, with regards to the idea of, you know, moving to Mexico, starting the business. And I was actually I spent a few years as a painter. Uh, I was painting houses, physical labor, um, which is it's a good thing, supported my family. My body needed a change. And uh, I had done entrepreneurial type ventures in, in the past uh, on a smaller scale. And I kind of have that mindset. But as Jacqueline, Jacqueline originally came up with a specific idea for a, uh, I'll explain it, a peer review festival where writers get to share their scripts and get feedback from each other. Uh, that's probably a, a, an adequate explanation for the moment. And that's how it started. Uh, we said, if we move, we can stop um, working 50 hours a week to pay the rent and uh, we will be able to, to do what we enjoy. And that means right. writing for Jacqueline. And then I got to start to build the website um, and all of the things that go with, you know, marketing to the degree that I, I know at this point, obviously we'll have to get help with marketing and such before too long. But, um, yeah, it was an opportunity to step away from, from the physical labor and to, um, you know, uh, align myself with what Jacqueline was doing and together already we've, we've made a, an impact I know, uh, in, in the industry and it's growing. So this coming year, we will uh, travel to a lot more film festivals. And uh, as we do that, of course, uh, people in the industry will get to know us more. And uh, right. and we will be able to help more people on their journey. So I have a question. Uh, you know, you have the business side of things. Then you have the production, the producing, the service. You know, as husband and wife team, how does work, what challenges have you had to overcome in, in, in working together? I know that not every couple <laughs> is able to work together. Like even family, like uh, Tim Simmons here is my father. Uh, there are times when we, we butt heads and we have to work through, work through some challenges and it's time out, time out. Yeah, it, 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 it's a very interesting dynamic um, and challenges. I know there are a lot of other, uh, couples out there that do business together. Not everyone can. Uh, my wife and I, we are polar opposites. We make a, a wonderful couple. We married, you know, going on 20 years, but we could not do business uh, together. It's just we're in that aspect. So kudos to both of you, <laughs> but I would like to, if you could, if you could offer some advice uh, to someone, uh, another couple that is doing business together, what would that be? I'll take this one. Okay. <laughs> it does have challenges. It, yes, there have been challenges, but more so, like, it's not just about the business. I mean, when you think about it, like, we went from being, you know, raising children in our home to now we're just the two of us. So there's that, you know, empty nesters. We moved to a new country. We started a new business. Like, everything, our lives changed entirely practically overnight. Wow. Um, and so there's a lot that we had to figure out and learn together and learn how to do. And because also we went from having the routine of he worked, he worked outside the home. I worked inside the home. And so we didn't see each other for eight hours a day, five days a week, or, you know, even more than that sometimes. Um, and now we're just always together. And <laughs> so I think like, we had to learn how to have a new dynamic. And so I think when you recognize like, okay, we can't 
expect this to be like before because it's not like before. So we had to um, we had to learn how to embrace the differences and um, and we do struggle with working together sometimes because our brains function differently. Right. Like my brain, I'm like rapid fire all the time, and his brain is like, let me think about this. You know, and so sometimes I get frustrated because I'm like, we need to make a decision. And he's like, I'm thinking on it, you know. And so we we just kind of approach things differently. And so sometimes that that works in our favor, because like if he slows the process down, maybe we'll come up with something better than what I would have had where I'm like, just like, no, let's do this. And he's like, let's think first. You know? So, so Consider yeah, there's the we have those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, and, but then at the same time, I have to push him and be like, okay, we've thought long enough. Let's let's make a decision now. So we push each other uh, on both sides. So there's another of, aspect. Of, the, no, I'm sorry. We have the business on one side, Jeff, right? And then we have the creators. So really two different kinds of, of uh, I guess, personalities, right? Yeah, there is a certain, a, a, a large degree where um, we, we do divide it in, um, different aspects of the of the job. So we're not both trying to do the same things most of the time. Well we're said. working on the same things. A, she's writing. Uh, B, she's um, on a meeting with uh, somebody, an author of a book that she's rewriting their, their or, sorry, writing their book into a screenplay. Or she's uh, more frequently on podcasts as a writer uh, and, and with uh, writing, podcasts for writers, for example. And um, I'm, adding a new program to the website or things like that. And there's certainly things we have to discuss uh, as we create new programs and get them on the website. We, we have to be in line with a lot of things, but uh, a lot of uh, things that she's working on, I just need to, to let her have her space so she can do it without being interrupted. And I do the things that she's not working on. So nice. shifting gears just a little bit, and I'm sure you guys have thought about this. And it's a question that I have. Maybe other folks might have it as well. How is the introduction of artificial intelligence or AI, how is that going to affect screenwriters mm -hmm. and their ability to produce original content or take an AI produced content and have it rewarded so it's not plagiarizing? How do, have you, how do you, do you plan, have any plans on introducing AI? How do you plan on working with that technology? Uh, from a writing perspective, I'm not going to use AI for a lot of reasons. One, I love writing. I love the struggle. I love the pressure, like all of the stuff that comes with the developing of the story and then writing it and bringing it out to, you know, bringing it to, to life on the page and, and making it what it could be like the the human touch is is uh it, it really is different than ai um and and so and i love the process so there's that but also um what ai does is it takes from other people's works and then kind of combines it and so it in itself it when it comes to writing it is a bit of a plagiarizing tool and not everybody's going to agree with me on that but that's that's one of my opinions on it um, but when it comes to screenwriting, so there's something called the Writers Guild, uh, and the Writers Guild has rules. And it was the writers were actually just on strike. I don't know if you knew, like there were actors on strike and writers on strike. Yeah. Um, so AI was one of the topics that was to be covered for that. So um, they're not allowed to use AI for writing. Oh wow! Um, Interesting. Are there checks and balances within the industry to stop? AI from being used from folks that may not be a part of that writer, writer's guild? Um, it would be difficult. Uh, it, it's one of those things that, where it is, it's hard to know because unless a the AI system itself came out and said like, um, hey, I'm the one that produced that, or, I, you know, then like, there would, because there's no real accountability on that side of things. However, <laughs> they're not very good at it. So, yeah, there have been times where I read um, like someone who wrote a screenwriting review because part of what we do is we teach people how to um, how to assess the scripts and, and how to get feedback and stuff like that. And so I 
one of our students, I read, he gave feedback on this script over here and he gave feedback on this script over here. And one of them, I was like, this is really amazing feedback, like really well thought out. Clearly he read the script and everything like that. And the other one, I, I actually asked him, did you use AI? Because there, it was just so different. Um, and so I think that writers, like people in the industry can read it and realize like this is not, uh, it doesn't work. Like something's not fitting. Um, so while it may come up with, it may come up with some, some storylines, you know, taking from other storylines, which really, I mean, there's not a lot of new storylines, right? Like you can trace all of them back to, oh yeah, this is you know, like the prodigal son, right? I mean, there's a lot of stories that are revolved around that kind of story. Yes. Right. And so from that sense, like you don't even need to use AI for that. You just think like, what kind of story do I want to tell? And then you can learn what you can from that story and then make your own out of it. And that happens all the time. Yeah, it, yeah, it seems like AI would, Jacqueline, would really take away from the just that uniqueness of a writer um, and, and their own creative thinking, their process and, uh, and uniqueness, right? Yeah, and I mean, language has a lot of nuance, and so does culture and sure. stuff like that. And it's hard, AI doesn't pick up on that stuff. So, right. you know, that's what, one of the things that makes a movie so memorable and engaging, and like the ones that people are like, I want to watch it again, you know, like, it's because there's something that has drawn them in that goes deeper than just words on a page and, you know, blocking on a screen. Like there's, there's something really deep happening. There's a lot of subtext. There's complications within relationships and dynamics and stuff. Things that AI just doesn't have, at least right now, it doesn't understand how to develop yeah, that. Right. That's it. You know, so Tom is Tom is a serial and, and Jeffrey, you, you may you may identify with this, but Tom is a he's a serial entrepreneur. I mean, he is he is he's all about the business. So, you know, the I, I think everything has a, a business side to it and certainly this you know the you know movie and script writing and things and has that business piece of it so um are are y'all are y'all together working that business piece of it or just kind of curious you know how that affects um you know the i guess the business you know y'all's business yeah, um, the business is, it, it's interesting that as we've started the business and as Family Friendly Screenwriting Academy, uh, and, and really in a market where something like that didn't exist, obviously there are teachers and so on, um, right. and, and the faith-based and family-friendly market is growing, as, as you mentioned, with, with even blockbusters and Lionsgate putting out major uh, theater, theatrical mm -hmm. releases, uh, for example. Um, but as far as specifically uh, an online academy teaching people in that space, it, it just didn't exist. Um, oh, wow. Cool. So, yeah. And I'll, I'll just also point out that one of the, the benefits, one of the... Uh, one of the things that we offer, it, it's not just that, for example, Jacqueline writes uh, uh, screenplays that have a, a family focused or a faith focused worldview. And, and I think that's important. You mentioned that word earlier. Uh, all of these movies don't have to, to be preaching at, at somebody. In fact, right. they don't usually do well if they're preaching at some somebody. But the main point is um, they have a worldview that um, that this audience is good with you know traditional family values for example um sure. understand but the, yeah. but the added thing with the academy is people who want to learn screenwriting can do it in an in an environment um that has those values for example when Japan was learning and she was taking courses or classes online she would be assigned uh movies to watch that she would never normally watch, uh, you know, stuff that didn't fit her values. And so uh, by providing this service, 
wow. people Thank who are you. interested in learning mm -hmm. and and teaching quality screenwriting in this space is very important. And as you said, they have gotten much better in recent years. And so we can do that and people can learn in an environment that fits their values and they don't have to compromise uh, themselves in mm -hmm. having to watch what's assigned to them to watch, for example. It's so a business, right? And, yeah. it, and it, yes, yes. Um, so uh, the, the types of, I'll just, I'll just mention we have a, a a screenwriting contest in this space and so um, and and the peer review festival allows people to share their scripts get feedback and attend a, a boot camp so we have a boot camp four times a year with three 90-minute classes uh, with different instructors and again everybody attending these will know that it, everything that's going on there will uh, align with their their worldview awesome so wow. In discussing values, um, there are some people, I'm going to bring it back to the uh, one of the reasons of uh, this podcast, uh, talking about success. Mm -hmm. We find that different people value different things. Some it's a big house, nice cars. Some it's, you know, the nine to five, would be, you know, want to you know have uh, weekends and evenings off. Some it's just pursuing a passion and or it could just be success could be for someone else. It's a, yeah. um, having an impact on someone else's life. So how do you, the two of you define success and have you caught the elusive success? The million dollar yeah. word. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, I really think, um, as long as I know that I'm right with God and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, then there's not really a whole lot more that I uh, need to worry about, you know? And and I, I, I'm the type of person, I love to work hard. I love to put my best into things. Like, I, I like to work smart, you know? <laughs> I wanna be, uh, you know, productive and, uh, and stuff. But like, I wrote for years, nobody paid me a dime. I do, I'd still do it even if I never made any money. I would keep writing, it's just in me to do, right? And so I think, for me, um, I feel like we do have success in the fact that we're doing exactly what we want to be doing. You know, like if we had stayed in Canada, it's not to say that we wouldn't have success. It would have been a struggle in a completely different way because we would have to force ourselves to do things that we didn't want to do, you know, in order to pursue the things that we wanted to pursue. Right. Um, and so, you know, we, we made this huge change that I know is not for everyone. Uh, but we we decided to do it, and then you know the life that we live here is a very simple life. We live in a very small town uh, with people just living everyday life here, uh, and and it's it's it is a very simple life. But every day we get to pursue what we want to pursue, and so I do find there's a lot of success just in the fact that we have that. That's that's amazing. That 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 is so. It, it's intriguing on, on many levels for me and and uh, I to 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 go to the length of, of relocating it's it's one of what they say I mean people who, who do social thing you know social understanding it's like one of the major stress points of somebody in their adult life is to move geographically move but you into a different country <laughs> so which is but, and well that's with a with kind of like a soul lane maybe it's it's kind of cool let's we went to a different country with basically owning our suitcases we had about 10 boxes left back at home to ship later and what we could take on the plane um we mm -hmm. we didn't have a house to sell but otherwise we sold everything that was in our house and sold our vehicles got on a plane yeah, yeah. Well, jeff didn't even speak spanish not a word so are you are you fluent now in, in uh -huh. Spanish? Far from fluent. I've learned a lot in a year. Uh, I can carry on conversations within a few weeks. Actually, I probably spent a couple of months before coming, uh, approximately, uh, you know, with with apps on my phone, learning some of the basic stuff. But right. then once I got here, um, and and Jacqueline's uh, encouragement was you you learn by practicing, by saying it wrong and being corrected, and we immediately <laughs> got. An amazing, like this town, 
welcomed us. We got the best friends overnight. Uh, it's, it's really amazing. And friends that were willing to be patient with our, our speech and correct us, tell us how to do it, how to say it right. right. Within probably two weeks, I would go off and shop by myself. Uh, you know, Google Translate helps a little bit when you need it. But um, yeah, I was just willing to try, fail, yeah. learn. Try and Jacqueline spoke uh, much more Spanish uh, much long before. So that helped too. So yeah. last, last question, and we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, what is, if you had to leave a piece of advice for someone that was an aspiring entrepreneur or maybe an aspiring mm -hmm. screenwriter, um, or wanting to get into the movie business, what's that one piece of advice you would leave somebody? I think uh, mentors are hugely important. You know, find somebody who's already doing what you want to do and and ask them, you know, buy them a, a meal and like pick their brain and um, find out what you can and, and see if you can even help them uh, come alongside you in the process. Like and pay them, you know, if they're people that need to be paid, pay them. I had a, a screenwriting mentor for um, probably three years before I started to pursue the industry and I paid him and he was worth every penny. And he, um, because like I said, I wrote for fun, right? It, it was my own thing. So th there were things that being self-taught, I missed teaching myself because I didn't realize, I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, and so he was able to help me learn all of those other things I needed to learn. Uh, but I, there's no way that I would be where I am today without having had a mentor. And Jeff, for the aspiring entrepreneur, um, what's that one piece of advice you would, you would leave somebody? Well, uh, I think it's possibly common advice in, uh, in this space. And that is, um, you've got to do it. Talking about it, thinking about it, planning, and sometimes that means doing it when you, and, and this is hard for me, it, doing it when you're not as ready as you think you should be, doing it when you haven't perfected everything yet. Uh, right. Starting, starting uh, is the biggest step. So um, we're, we're actually going to be starting a podcast and our, our uh, next month it will be released. And it's mm. one of those things mm. we've heard that advice ourselves. It's like, um start start imperfect and grow improve mm -hmm. uh, but if you wait until you think you know everything you're going to be way behind uh, right. the ball with uh, with your podcast no zig ziglar said this it's a quote of his and i discovered it recently he says you don't have to be great to start but you have to start to be great uh-huh and last thing, Jeff, what is, do you have a name for the podcast? Yes, our podcast uh, will be called Faith and Family Filmmakers Podcast. As we, uh, an umbrella name of our organization is changing to Faith and Family uh, Filmmakers Association, and our academy will be under that. And the podcast will reach out to uh, more than screenwriters, but actors, producers, right. directors, and kind of pull everyone together in that space in that uh that space in that genre to to learn from each other and uh give advice uh find ways to move forward together awesome well thank you both for right. taking the time um giving insights to the film industry and the business side of things as well uh really appreciate it and uh, i look forward to listening to the podcast thank you yeah, thank you very, very, very nice to meet you thank you likewise Take care.